So today we're going to be discussing enthalpy and phase changes. So first off, how do phase changes occur? Um, well, they occur whenever energy is either added or removed from a system. Uh, remember that when energy is added to a system, that is an endothermic process because energy is absorbed by the system. Um, usually that occurs as heat. So usually it's heat that's being absorbed by the system. When heat is absorbed by the system, uh, it speeds up the particles, right? Heat them up, speed them up. So the average kinetic energy of those particles increases. Um, and so, of course, it, it gets warmer as it absorbs heat. Now, eventually, those particles have enough energy um, and enough kinetic energy to move away from each other. They can actually break from the attractive force of particles around them. Um, they can overcome those intermolecular forces that are holding them together and they can move away from each other, so they can move more freely. What that does is it causes solids uh, to break those strong intermolecular forces, and those particles can move past each other uh, into the liquid phase. Um, after the liquid phase, if they absorb even more energy, then they have enough energy to really get away from each other, to really escape those intermolecular attractions, um, and go into the gas phase. Now, phase changes can also occur whenever energy is released. So whenever energy is lost by the system to the surroundings, that's an exothermic process. Energy is exiting the system. Um, so of course, what that does is as the energy is lost by the system, the kinetic energy of those particles decreases. Uh, they get cooler, right? And so when they get cooler, um, they start moving around less. They lack the energy to overcome intermolecular forces. And what happens is they get attracted to each other they become closer to each other, and they move closer to that solid phase. So we can see here in this diagram um, that there are phase changes between all of the different phases of matter. Um, when a solid uh, increases in enthalpy, it becomes a liquid, and that process is known as melting. When the liquid decreases in enthalpy, when it loses energy, um, it becomes a solid. Uh, similarly, whenever a liquid increases in enthalpy, it becomes a gas that's a vaporization. Uh, whenever the gas decreases in enthalpy or energy, um, it becomes a liquid that's condensation. And we don't really talk about plasma all that much, but I thought I'd go over it because it's kind of a cool phase of matter. So we know that you know solids, liquids, and gases exist on Earth. Plasma really just exists um, like in stars, superheated gases. And what happens is you give those particles enough energy that the electrons start to escape the attractive force of the nucleus, which is pretty cool. So what you end up with is a mixture of ions, um, nuclei, and um, charged electrons. So we've excited those electrons beyond the electron cloud, and now you've just got this really cool mix of charged particles. So that's a plasma. So how do we get these phase changes to occur? Well, during a phase change, um, that energy has to be absorbed uh, in order to break the forces of attraction. And um, during that phase change, what happens is energy is being absorbed, but it doesn't make the system get any warmer. What happens is all of that energy is used to break those intermolecular forces. So that substance is gaining that energy and that enthalpy of that substance is increasing. Um, now the amount of energy it takes to melt a substance when it reaches um, the temperature known as its melting point is called the enthalpy or heat of fusion. Uh, the amount of energy required to evaporate a liquid is known as the heat of vaporization. And so here's a cool little diagram that just kind of shows you what I'm talking about. Notice that a solid has the least heat energy um, of any of the phases of matter. And so you have that solid, as you increase the heat of that solid, the temperature of that solid increases. Now at a certain point, you reach the melting point. For all substances, that's a little bit different. We know that for um, ice, the melting point is the same as the freezing point. It's where that solid and liquid uh, start changing phases, right? Um, that melting point right there is zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, once we reach that point, all of the energy that's absorbed, all of that heat energy that goes into the substance is used to change phase. So it's going to take that solid and break apart those particles, uh, moving them into the liquid phase. Now, once that's complete, the liquid is going to continue to absorb energy um, and it's going to change temperatures. So we notice that the temperature here of the liquid is increasing until, again, we reach 
the boiling point. So the boiling point is where that next phase change occurs. That's whenever the energy is absorbed uh, and used to break apart those particles and move them from the gas uh, liquid phase to the gas phase. And then of course the gas can continue um, increasing in temperature. Um, now eventually we get to the plasma state, right? Um, but since we're not talking about stars at this point, we're really just gonna stick to solid, liquid, and gas. We're really just gonna talk about these phase changes here, uh, melting and freezing, and then vaporization and condensation. So how do we actually calculate the amount of energy it takes um, to perform these phase changes? So we have to do two different kinds of calculations. When the substance is undergoing a temperature change, um, the energy is being used to change the temperature of that substance. And so we would use this very familiar equation, Q equals M times the specific heat times the change in temperature. So we've used that one in calorimetry quite a bit. Um, we would calculate the enthalpy or energy required um, to heat the substance using this equation. Now during a phase change, the temperature is not changing. So delta T is not a factor. We can't use that same equation. So during a phase change, the amount of energy that is being absorbed or released um, in order to change phases, we would have to calculate using this equation. So we would uh, calculate the energy by taking the mass of the substance and multiplying it by uh, the enthalpy of fusion, um, if it's going from solid to liquid, or the enthalpy of vaporization, if it's going from liquid to gas. Now, we have to be really, really careful. Um, the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization for one thing, they are different. So the heat of fusion for any substance is not gonna be the same as its heat of vaporization. We also have to be really careful about the units. Um, sometimes they're given in kilojoules per mole. Sometimes they're given in kilojoules per gram. You really have to pay attention to the units for the amounts of substance you're given and the units that are on those heats of vaporization um, and fusion. Make sure that they match. If you're given an amount in grams, then you can't take the grams and multiply it by kilojoules per mole. It doesn't work that way. And so again, um, just kind of going over this, we can look at that same diagram and see that we're gonna be using different equations at different points um, to do our calculations. So if I have a solid that's undergoing a temperature change, I would use the heat is equal to the product of mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. And once I reach that melting point, um, I'm going to have to switch equations because all of the energy at that point is being used to um, perform a phase change. So heat is going to be equal to the product of the mass times the enthalpy of fusion. Um, then once that phase change is complete, it's going to go from the melting point to the boiling point, And any temperature change that it undergoes there is going to be calculated using that Q equals M times CB times delta T equation. Once we reach the boiling point, another phase change is going to occur. So I have to use that phase change equation, keeping in mind that I'm now using the enthalpy of vaporization. And then beyond that, the gas is going to change temperature, and I would calculate that again using the heat is equal to the product of mass times specific heat times change in temperature. So let's go through this example. Um, what quantity of energy is required to convert half a kilogram of ice at 20 negative 20 degrees Celsius into steam at 250 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then we're given a bunch of specific heat capacities and enthalpies of both vaporization and fusion. Uh, and I want you guys to pay attention to this really quick. If I compare those two values, the enthalpy of fusion is 6.02 kilojoules per mole, and the enthalpy of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. It takes a whole lot more energy to evaporate a liquid and convert it to gas than it does to uh, take a solid and melt it into a liquid. Why? Because we're really overcoming those forces of attraction. When we move from a liquid to a gas, we basically have to overcome all of the intermolecular forces of that substance and move those particles really far apart from each other. We have to give them a lot of energy to move them into the gas phase. So that's why the enthalpy of vaporization is usually going to be quite a bit greater than the enthalpy of fusion. All right, well, anyway, we got to figure out what's going on here. So I'm, I've got ice, it's really cold, it's negative 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, I need to turn it into steam, really hot steam, 250 degrees Celsius. All right, so what's going to happen first? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that solid is going to have to heat up until it reaches the boiling point. 
So since we're talking about a temperature change, it has to go from negative 20 degrees Celsius to zero. We're gonna use the uh, Q is equal to the mass, which I've converted to grams because my specific heat was given in grams. Again, watch those units. So I've got the, the grams times the specific heat of the ice, which is not the same as specific heat of water, so be careful there too. Um, multiplied by that temperature change, which is you know the final minus initial, zero minus negative 20, that's positive 20, um, is equal to 20,300 joules. And again, that's joules because that was the unit that was in my specific heat. Make sure your units are good. Make sure they all match. My grams canceled out, my degrees Celsius canceled out, so my unit for this answer should be joules. Okay, great. So we've heated it up to the melting point. Now what? Well, at the melting point, all of that energy is going to go into the substance and it's going to be used to change the phase of the substance from the solid to the liquid phase. So we're going to use a phase change equation. Q is equal to the mass times the enthalpy of fusion, except we were given a mass of substance, but the enthalpy of fusion is in kilojoules per mole. Well, okay. So what that means is we've got to do a little conversion here. Let's change the 500 grams to moles, which if we do the dimensional analysis, that's 27.8 moles of water. And then we are going to use that phase change equation, multiplying moles times the enthalpy of fusion in kilojoules per mole. So when I do that, I end up with 167 kilojoules of energy. So that's the amount of energy it takes to melt this substance. Well, once it melts, now we got to heat up the water, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to heat up all the way from zero degrees Celsius, its melting point, to the boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. That is a 100 degree swing there. So my delta T is going to be equal to 100 degrees. Um, I'm going to use the temperature change equation for this one. So heat is equal to my mass times the specific heat of liquid water times my temperature change for a good 209,000 joules. That's joules, not kilojoules. All right, then once we get to that boiling point, that substance is going to have to go from a liquid to a gas. Again, this is a phase change, so we have to multiply the amount times the enthalpy of vaporization this time because we're vaporizing the substance. And so we've already converted grams to moles, so I'm going to take that 27.8 moles, multiply it by the enthalpy of fusion, and I get 1,130 kilojoules of energy. Okay, great. So it's evaporated. It's steam now at 100 degrees Celsius. Last step is we got to get this thing from 100 degrees Celsius to 250. Now that's a temperature change. So again, I'm going to take the mass, multiply it by the specific heat of steam this time, and then multiply it by the change in temperature, which turns out to be 150 degrees, for a good 152,000 joules. So we went through a lot of changes. We did a bunch of temperature changes. We did two different phase changes. So we need to put all of that energy together to calculate the amount of energy it takes to make all of those changes. Now watch the units here because some of the calculations gave us joules. So I went ahead and converted those to kilojoules. So again, um, there is 1,000 joules in one kilojoule. Um, so 20,300 joules becomes 20.3 kilojoules. Um, then I had 167 kilojoules whenever we converted the um, solid to liquid. 209,000 joules were required to change its temperature from 0 to 100 degrees, so that's 209 kilojoules. Then it took 1,130 uh, kilojoules to evaporate the substance and another 152,000 joules or 152 kilojoules to get that steam from 100 degrees up to 250. And so the total amount there in kilojoules is 1,680 kilojoules. So this was kind of a lot of work, and you really have to think about what's going on within the problem. You have to think about, is the substance undergoing a temperature change or a phase change? Make sure that you're using the correct specific heat or the correct enthalpy, um, right? If it's melting or, or freezing, you're gonna have to use that enthalpy of fusion. If it is uh, condensing or evaporating, you're gonna have to use that enthalpy of vaporization. Um, and then sometimes you're going to have to do a bunch of separate calculations and add them together depending on what changes are occurring um, from point A to point B. So good luck with these.